Etsy general store versus Etsy niche store. Which one's best? Let's find out. This is something that I've been asked a lot by um, my followers and people on YouTube, and it's something that needs clarifying. So let's start at the beginning and understand what actually is a general store and what a niche store is. So the first thing, <clears throat> a general store. So I don't see many general Etsy stores because what people think might be a general Etsy store isn't a general store. If you go, go and see a clothing store and you've got hoodies and T-shirts and leggings and shorts and all sorts of stuff, people would say, well, that's a general clothing store. Yeah, it is, but it's not a general store. A general store would be, you might have t-shirts, you might have jewellery in there, you might have kitchen uh, utensils and accessories, almost like a department store. That is my definition of a general store. And this is extremely rare to actually find on Etsy. I hardly ever see stores that are general. In fact, I can't remember the last time I saw a truly general Etsy store. They're always broadly into um, some kind of niche, but I will say one of the one of the types of stores that I do see that perhaps you can class as general is gift stores. So gift stores where they're heavily weighted towards Christmas are probably some of the most general that I see. But having a store with just random stuff from all over the different niches, I pretty much never see. So in this example, I'm going to take gift store, a gift store as the general option. And then for a um, niche store, we can use jewellery. So both are very, very common. You'll see loads of gift stores on Etsy <clears throat> and loads of jewellery stores. So the point that I want to make is the context of the last previous two years of selling on Etsy. That's the context that I want to relate to. So this was the COVID years and sellers that built and grew stores in 2020 and 2021 are what I call COVID stores. So they had this unique opportunity to build and grow when everyone was spending money, where everyone was on furlough, not working, they had money, they were at home. And when you look at stores to work out what to do, whether you want a general store or a niche store, you have to remember when was the store created that you're looking at when you're deciding, because you should do research. Of course, you should do research on what you want to do. But I just want you to remember the context of the stores you're looking at. So when you see a general store, it might have 20,000 sales or 15,000 sales, something like that. Um, look at the years. Was it? Did it start in 2020 and 2020, 2021? If it did, they got a huge boost from all that money washing around and people purchasing stuff all the time. And don't necessarily think just because they did it, it will be fine for you in 2022, moving into 2023. So just do some decent research into the histories of the stores when they opened, uh, and that will give you a bit better idea of, of what's working and what's not. So that's the context. Now, <clears throat> when you look at a general gift store, so the general store side of things, you are going to need to focus on a bigger store to capture more customer searches because your store is so general, you know, because you're selling all different types of gifts, whereas a niche store, it's targeted. It's targeted. You know, a niche store, you might be, you might be doing... Um, astrology jewellery, for example, or birthstone jewellery. Well, that's massively targeted. So Etsy knows straight away what your store is about and what you're doing. And yes, you still need, I, I, I won't change what I advise you guys, you'll still need 100 items and probably end up somewhere 100, 150, 200, 250 items in your store over a period of time. But that is very straightforward for Etsy to quantify. It will know your quality score imprint. It will know what your store is about. All the keywords, all your products, they're all linked to, to birthstone jewellery. So, very, and by the way, that's a very solid niche to get into. Um, very straightforward for Etsy. A general store is more difficult because first thing, if in the example I'm giving you, and there's not that many general store examples to look at, 
but one of them is gifting, so gift store. It's heavily weighted to Christmas. So you're waiting to get to September, October, November, December to see this rise in traffic and rise in sales um, compared to the rest of the year. Sure, people um, shop for birthdays every day of the year and so on, but I work with gift stores all the time and I can see it's all about October, November, December. In case you guys don't know, most Etsy stores will earn more, more revenue in October, November, December than the rest of the year. And this is massively um, critical for, for gift stores. But with gift stores, you've got to have a plan to get much bigger. You've got to grow bigger. You've got to have more items, more offerings. You've got to find what works against many, many products that you're going to sell that don't work. So you've got to find the winning products. The jewellery store that's already focusing in on birthstone jewellery, already targeted, um, you know, and you presume that they're going to run a good store, good photos, good videos and so on. It's going to pick up pace with less items. So in a gift store, 200, 300, 400 items and more is totally, totally normal. You don't need to go that far with a niche store. So the thinking here from the top, the top level looking down into this is You've got to decide which one in terms of sheer inventory number works best for you. So some people might say, yeah, you know, uh, you know, a, gen a general store is great. I'm going to sort out hundreds of items to sell over the first couple of couple of years selling. Great. No problem. Go for it. And remember the Christmas selling season. But that's much harder because of the sheer volume of items you've got to source, uh, create, put into your uh, put into your store. So it's a time management decision we're talking about here and a general store is usually good for people that are interested in selling on Etsy but don't have this guidance this internal guidance to know what niche that they're going to choose I would say myself you should pick a niche Gift stores are notoriously difficult to make successful simply because most sellers don't understand the size implications, the amount of inventory you need, the amount of items that are going to fail and not work. Whereas on the on the niche side, I always advise people to choose niches because you are cutting away the general customers and appealing to certain types of customers like with birthstone jewellery. So birthstone jewellery is heavily female orientated in general. And then you have less competition to deal with. General stores have, you know, big competition. At Christmas, everyone's selling gifts, you know. Um, so pick a niche store is my advice. And then once you've picked, so jewellery is the niche. Then the sub niche, in my example, is birthstone jewellery. So you can do everything to do with birthstone jewelry. You've got the you've got rings and necklaces and bracelets and anklets and you know all that sort of stuff. Um, and you are as long as your jewelry quality is good, your photography and video are good, you're going to pick up the right customers much more quickly than a general store. And jewelry stores, and I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of jewelry stores. And someone someone um, had a go at me in my um, how to make $10,000. Not have a go, but she was questioning saying, you know, why are you recommending jewelry? It's because you can earn a ton of money. There's so much money to be earned in jewelry. It never changes, you know. I, you know, and I said, you know, sell silver, gold, rose, gold. And she was like, well, you know, why are you recommending niches that everyone's in? Because if you do it well, you can make a ton of money. And that's why I recommended it. There's so much more to it than just say what I said. I can only put so much in in one video. You've got to be a good seller. You've got to bring out quality products. You've got to do your research. But you do all that. There's loads of money to be earned in jewellery. So I'll always pick a niche and I would have a solid selection of sub niches below the niche. So when I say sub niches, if you were going to do a T-shirt store, for example, um, I would one of the things I advise t-shirt sellers to do is professions. So the niche is t-shirts, but the sub niches is, is professions. So the military, medical, um, sports, um, all that sort of stuff. So that you've got a healthy set of sub niches inside your niche. Um, I'll pick that all the time over a general store. Not to say a general store won't work. General store is good 
if you can make a commitment to bigger inventory and you have a passion for growing the store. That's the main thing. You've got to go bigger with a general store and have a passion for commitment and sticking to actually building out and growing the store over a good 12 to 24 months. So if you have no direction with a niche, but you have passion for the store, by all means, go for it. But just recognize it will be a, a, a more difficult journey than something like a birthstone jewelry store provided you have the quality there. Um, I would always pick a niche. So that's my answer. I know I haven't covered everything, there's all sorts of other things to consider, but there's only so much I can fit in these videos without sort of rambling on for, I could talk about this for an hour. Uh, who wants to listen to me for an hour? So um, please get your questions in about this niche store versus general. I know I haven't covered everything. Ask me in the comments. I've got someone helping me with the YouTube comments now. So ask me the questions, I'll answer them all. I hope this helped in understanding what a general store is, what a niche store is, and what I would choose, and the merits um, to both. Cheers, see you in the next video.